Welcome again to the 1996 USDF National Dressage Symposium. In the first two volumes, our symposium leaders laid the foundation for advanced work by emphasizing an effective classical seat, by using the building blocks of the lower levels to create suppleness and straightness, and by teaching the horses to understand the half halt. As we come to the topic of collection, Robert Dover leads off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through a day in the life and I'm going to add in all the things that I would do to try to produce a greater degree of an elastic connection that then will bring me towards the idea of collection. And within collection, the horse must have the thought of forward. So when I talk to my riders, I always say, a horse who is truly on the aids has collection alive in extension, and extension is alive in the collection. That means that if I ask the horse to lengthen his stride and then shorten his stride, when I lengthen the stride, I should never have lost the balance and the feeling of control that I had when I was in collection. And when I collect the stride, I should never lose that horse's huge desire to go forward and to have the ability to lengthen again. And so truly, collection means that anything's possible. That's what it's all really about. Adjustability is everything in dressage, all right? Now, the first thing that I want to do when I'm going to start with the idea of making the connection better so that I can increase the amount of collection in the horse is that I'm going to make sure that he's first been able to stretch, that he still, while I'm teaching him collection, has the desire to come over his back. There will be many times when I take a, a, a check for myself that everything really is what I'm hoping that it is. I take into consideration what I'm feeling in the walk. I'm looking for a harmonious walk. I'm looking for a horse, especially this horse, that wants to take a friendly hold of my, of my hand, like a child that I would want to take across the street. And I wouldn't want him to drag me across the street, but I don't want him to let go of my hand when we cross the street either. And this horse, because he was too light, and because he wasn't coming from behind through the rain, uh, you're going to see that I'm always going to be trying to create the connection from which I'll produce more collection. So now off to the trot, through the half halt. Half halts are everything, don't forget it, that we go through the half halt, and I try to produce right away a feeling of harmony in the trot. What I want to do is look for a cadence, look for a rhythm, look for the ability now to ride the half halt and maintaining my contact on the left rein, which is a little bit more difficult with this horse because he would like to be a little bit more against the right rein than the left rein. I incorporate now all of the things that Michael and Hilda have discussed in my idea of straightness of suppleness and then I begin to ride some more half halts and I start to say okay I'd like you to push through to my left rein maintaining the bend and bring the hind legs a little bit more under and for a few seconds at a time bend the joints of your hind legs a little more now with this horse as you notice when I tried that a couple of times there before he he got a little lofty and he actually lifted up a bit in the front end. I don't necessarily want him to get lofty because I don't want him to swim forward as I ask with my legs. And I also want him to stay very steady at the bridle. I don't want him going too much up or too much down. I want him quite still and I want him to just bend his hind legs a little more. And But I am always trying to say, go from the hind end forward to my hand. There, he got a little strong forward. I'm going to push him a little more. One thing about him is that he's finding many things easy, but he also gets distracted 
very easily. Being a young stallion and being in a place far from home, he forgets to concentrate on me, so I ride another half halt. Oh, it's brav. Quietly, and another. Never think that you can ride too many half halts, okay? Every corner, every turn is another time that you should look at as an opportunity. Every time you fail in a half halt to get what you wanted is an opportunity to do it again. I'm going to practice the idea of lengthening and shortening. And I'm going to do it in many places because we tend to always want to lengthen and shorten in places where the horses find it very simple. So at first, I'm going to lengthen for short periods of time. And half halt pushing forward to my hand and steady. And then I'm going to go again. Now you'll see what I'm going to do is come back again, add, never subtract, and soften. Good boy. And then, a little bit more difficult. And again back. Oh, give. Good boy. Now I'm going to add the engaging, collecting exercise of shoulder in. There you saw him push in. A bit from my, against my left leg, I pushed him back out, half out to the corner, and again forward, and back. He tries to fall a bit down on my hand there, so I ride the next half halt. And softly, giving the inner rein, looking for a sense of rhythm. One question that comes up many times on lateral work is that you see horses trot beautifully straight ahead. And now again, I'll do the same the other way, but the horse then, good boy, the horse then is asked to do something lateral and you see them lose their ability to maintain their cadence. And many people say, well, what do I do about that? I go straight ahead, everything is fine. I try to go to a lateral movement. I'm gonna to try to make this happen. Watch. Could you see him lose his rhythm? Look, you see that? And now I'm going to go back to the other rhythm. Look. Watch again, I'm gonna make him lose his rhythm. I'm doing it by getting a large angle, by taking too much inside rein, by using my hands too much and by being loose in my leg. Do you see that? Now, I'm going to go through a half halt and I'm going to keep him a little bit straighter, a little less angle, and I'm going to keep my legs close to him. Look at the rhythm now. And this has to do with the harmony of the rider on the horse. That's one thing in his natural movement. And secondly, it has to do with riding a horse as if he was a jigsaw puzzle. If you put all of the pieces in the right place, a horse becomes a beautiful picture. Whereas if you take pieces, like I did before on that long side, and just say, okay, I want this piece over there, I'll just throw it there, and I want this piece over there, I'll throw it over there, you end up with lots of pieces that could make a picture, but they don't. So the reason that cadence was there, but not down there, is because, yes, I used inside rein, yes, I used inside leg, yes, I used outside leg, so I used all the same aids, I didn't use the right amounts, and I did not, this goes back to the first lesson today, I did not ride him with the steadiness of my own seat. There, and there I did.